Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kayla here. I want to thank you all so much for cooking on today's video. We're going to be getting a lot of stuff done out in the shed today. So I'm really excited about that. But first y'all, I need to clean up my house because it's looking a mess. Okay. Come, come, come along. Oh, also I took out my hair and I really like it. You guys, it got a little bit longer. Update though, I will be going back to black before the wedding, but y'all need to come here for your update. So come on, let. So currently, this is what my living room situation is looking like. Marcus and I slept on the couch like for the past two nights because we were in here just chilling, watching movies. You know, sometimes you don't want to go sleep in the bed. Well, anyways, our couches are so comfortable, so we slept in here. And um, now I need to just get this area together because what if I had guests come in like? Oh, this just looks terrible, 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 terrible. So I'm just gonna tidy up this room real quick so it can look a little bit more presentable and then we're gonna spend some time outdoors. I feel like before I go outside, I have to get the inside right. So let's go ahead and get to cleaning. It's all I do want to give a huge shout out to Ecovacs for sponsoring today's video. I'll be using the Dbot T10 Plus model and I absolutely love it because first off it's gorgeous. So stylish, chic, and the white color is absolutely amazing. This vacuum but also mop has an all-in-one convenience that cleans the floors in a single step. The Dbot T10 Plus detects and avoids carpet when mopping hard surfaces and it automatically boosts power when vacuuming carpets and rugs. All right guys, so it is back there cleaning for me. I named my little robot Kayla's Cleaner with a K and Cleaner because I thought that was super duper cute. And there's a lot of features that they have here on the app. For example, there is a video manager, which I feel like is really neat. Video manager allows for two-way communication and I can even check on Marshmallow when I'm not home using this feature. For example, I can see now everything that it's vacuuming, it's coming right for us, you guys. So I feel like that is super duper duper cool. Another great thing is that it avoids the objects on the floor. You guys know I have a small dog, Marshmallow, and so her toys are often everywhere. A great job at avoiding them. So I didn't get around to picking them up yet, but no worries, they're not getting caught in it. So that's a win for the both of us. Another thing that I absolutely love is that it comes equipped with an air freshener. No other robot vacuum or mop has this. The scent is cucumber and oak and it smells absolutely amazing. And the last thing I need to do is empty my dustbin. This is one of my favorite features of the Dbot T10 Plus because it's one less thing I need to do and it gives a month of maintenance free cleaning. If you guys want to get your hands on the Dbot T10 Plus, please check out my link in the description box. All right guys, so we are officially all cleaned up in here, so now let's head outside and continue working on the shed. Alright, hey guys, so we are outside and this is where we are going to be placing our shed on like the corner edge of our property. And the whole reason we're doing this, just in case you missed my last video when I went into depth and told the whole crazy story about how we got to this point, um, we are creating this shed from scratch because one, manufactured sheds are just very, very expensive. And also, too, the quality of those sheds just wasn't given what we needed them to give. So Marcus and I decided to build one 
from scratch. So in this footage right now, we are just mapping out how big we wanted it to be. So we decided to go for an 8x14 shed with a porch. I know I got a lot of comments in my last video about why do we need a porch because the shed is just simply for like storage and things like that, which is true. But y'all know me, I'm extra. And I fell in love with the sheds that have a porch on them when we went shed shopping. I had never seen any sheds like that. So I thought it was just super duper cute. And luckily, Marcus and I were able to find these shed plans online. So we're not just coming up with all this stuff on our own. We are following some plans to help us because we are novice builders. And so once we knew how big we wanted our shed to be, we looked up some different plans on Etsy and we found one with a porch. So it's actually gonna turn out to be really, really perfect, but we do have to tweak the design a little bit. For example, on the shed plans, he has a barn door being added, but we're not gonna do a big barn door. We're gonna do some windows and just a regular door on there, nothing too crazy along with the porch. So now we are picking up right where we left off in our last episode of our shed makeover. Um, basically, we're just staking out the land right now, making sure that where we're going to put our foundation, which is super duper important, is as square as possible. The shed plans that we purchased didn't actually give us any instructions on how to do this, so we watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to make sure that you know, the lines and stuff are square and how to make sure that we are setting up our foundation the correct way. And once we do this, we are gonna head to the Home Depot so we can get these materials and start building our frame. So we made it to the Home Depot and we're here to pick up all the materials that we need to create that foundation of our shed, which is probably the most important part. And we're gonna be using these deck blocks to help us. They go for about $1.97 a piece at the Home Depot. And as an alternative, you could also use deck blocks, which we were going to use, but then we decided that these might be a little bit easier for us because we have a pretty big slope on our land. And so these deck blocks are really gonna help us make a strong and sturdy solid foundation instead of just building right on top of the plain ground we needed some height and we also needed some materials that were going to protect our shed from the element so this definitely will help us with that we're also picking out some lumber we needed so many pieces I mean two by four by twelves we needed two by four by eights four by four by twelves I mean this was definitely a workout these pieces of wood are so so long Y'all, we're back where we live, which is the home Zipo. We came to get sea gravel, nails. What else do you need, babe? Uh, what's the stuff called? Screws. Yeah. And we got these line levels on here. Line so. level. I, I think that's just about it, though. Because literally, we're getting yeah. all this stuff to make the frame. I'm almost feeling like we should get the rest of the wood, too. But... One, one step at a time, one step at a time. Cause eventually we'll need more wood to make the walls and stuff. So right now we're just focusing on the frame. Last night when we came here, we spent over $300. And so now we're just getting like the little bitty things that we need to, you know, put the frame together. We need these crazy, crazy long screws. They are literally five inches long. I am All right, y'all, so now we are using these paver stones. You can also use deck blocks if you want, 
but we decided that these would be better because our instructions call for us to use a four by four by 16. So we're gonna put four along this um, line and then four along that edge as well. Um, and this is what, this is basically gonna be creating our foundation. Alright guys, so it's been a few days. As you can see, my braids are out. Um, and we are back out here getting ready to work on the shed again. So last time, last clip you guys saw, we put down these blocks here. And these are called paving blocks, I believe. And basically this is what our foundation is going to sit on. So now that we have that here, we're gonna use our leveler to make sure that it's level and then we're going to put our big four by fours on top and then we can start building the frame. It's a whole process. So let's get this foundation all built out. Not gonna promise we're gonna get that done all like right now in this clip, but in this video, we're getting the foundation done. If we can get some walls up too, that would be great. So let's go ahead and get it started. If you guys have ever built anything from scratch, no matter how big or how small, leave us some tips and tricks or lessons you learned down below in the comments. We would love to read those. And if you haven't built anything before, leave us some words of encouragement. We could really, really use it. For those of you who might be new to my channel, Marcus and I, we are getting married back here in our backyard in literally two months, you guys. It's honestly so crazy to me that time is just going so, so fast. So this shed is a project that needs to be completed as soon as possible. And the reason that is, is because we're actually banking on this shed to be done so we can have a storage option. That way we can get the office ready because a lot of our tools and stuff are in the office right now and the office is not decorated. And that is a space that I want me and my ladies to get ready in and do our makeup and stuff because it has that the best morning light in the whole house. So we need to be able to move all that stuff out of there into this shed along with all the other mess that we have in the house. So you guys, all the encouraging words, they will really help us out. We need them now more than ever. All right y'all, so this is the last like paver block we have to level out on this side. And basically what we're trying to do is to build up the height of this one since it's kind of at the lowest point. So I realized I needed a lot of rocks. I'm gonna check it now because I don't want to add too many and then have to take away. So I'm gonna just put it right back on top. And now we'll see if it's level. Is it level guys? Oh, okay. So, it's level. It looks good. It's a little bit more this way. So I don't know. Oh no, it's too much. Now it seems like something's still off down here, but maybe if I add some more rocks right down here, you guys. These are really gonna be some awesome memories to look back on in the future and know that like, hey, we built this together. I, I cannot wait to just have that moment. One idea I had actually was for us to write encouraging words um, or Bible verses on the studs of the shed. You guys let me know if we should do that. I've seen people do it when they build their houses and I know this isn't a house so it's <laughs> probably so extra, but I think it'll be cute because this will probably stand on our property for forever. I have no intentions of ever taking it down, maybe rehabilitating it if it gets too old in the future, but I think we should write Bible verses or like fun positive quotes or Marcus Hart's Kayla in there. Just little things like that on the studs. Y'all let me know if you like that idea. 
So basically now we are still leveling out these paver stones because the land slopes down. We needed to add extra, extra, <laughs> extra paver blocks on the right side. So that's why it looks like that. And now Marcus is beginning to create the joists. So the joists are basically the floor studs. Um, and we had to cut those down just a teeny weeny bit to about seven feet, I believe, instead of eight, which is how they came. Just watching this footage back makes me so proud of Marcus all over again. So when I came out here and saw everything that he did, I was just so amazed. It's so cool to me the things that like he's able to do and create with all these power tools. It's also inspiring me to like want to start using them more myself. I am just the clumsiest person though. <laughs> I really don't trust myself with using the power tools, but I've been doing a little bit more here and there. In fact, you guys will see me do a couple things later on in this video. But um, yeah, I'm just so, so proud of him. And reading y'all's comments, like always giving him encouragement and the props and the kudos just makes my heart so happy. So now that the wood is all cut up, Marcus is now beginning to build this frame, which already looks so amazing. I mean, just look at this thing. And over there on top of the paver stones, he put the skids down. And so this is where the instructions actually started with creating like the skids and creating the frame. So everything that we did over there previously, we picked up from YouTube. So it, there's probably a thousand different ways that you can create a foundation, but this is just the way that we did it with the paper stone and the rocks and the different pieces of roofing to make the areas more level. Also in these clips, I can't help but notice the grass. So I wanna give y'all a little update in case you're looking at it too, like what happened. So basically in Georgia, we had this terrible heat wave. It lasted like three or four days, maybe a little bit longer. And our grass really suffered because of it. So our beautiful green grass, a lot of it was fescue. It started to die out and the Bermuda is now taking over. But no worries, it's starting to look a little bit better as the days go on. All right guys, so it is the next day and y'all, look at this awesome frame that Marcus is starting to build. I'm so excited. I gash, like I cut my finger up so bad. Like I've been out of commission for the past two days being the biggest baby ever because my cut was so deep. I almost thought, okay, let's just not talk about it. Let's just not. Cause some of y'all might be queasy like me. It was just bad, know that. So anyways, I'm out here now, ready to help do a little bit more than I have been doing, but Marcus been holding it down regardless. So, wow, this is so cool. So, this is going to go on top of that over there, which is like our foundation. Y'all saw us level that whole thing out and get it together. One side is gonna be higher than the other side um, because of our, like the way the land is going. So yeah, I think Marcus is gonna go ahead and like continue doing this, like putting the little joists here and then we'll be able to attach this to the skids over there. I also just called like my family to get some second opinions on this whole thing because to me, like how I explained to you guys, it looks crooked, but the level does say it's level. That's what Marcus has been saying all along. I was just like, are you sure? It looks weird to me. 
but we're just gonna keep going with the way that it is and now we are going to place this right here on top of the foundation before it gets too heavy and then we'll put the final pieces on so i'm happy i got freed lucky 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 me uh -oh. lucky 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 me So this is where those really long five inch screws that we got from the Home Depot come into play. We're using those to secure the frame to the skids, which are like the thicker pieces of wood down there at the bottom. And this is gonna make sure that our frame does not move as we continue to add more of the joists. All right, y'all, so now it was my turn to start using the drill and screw in those really long five inch screws just to secure everything into place. And Marcus was telling me like, I have to lean my whole body into this um, to make sure that they really, really go in. So as you can see, I was leaning way, way over. But of course, if you're super duper strong, I wouldn't say that I am kind of a weakling. If you're super duper strong, you probably don't need to do all of this, but he was saying I needed to put my body weight on these to really make sure that they make contact with the next piece of wood. And that trick really, really worked. So I was proud of me. All right, cool. Okay, and this is a random little giveaway I thought of. We have used so many screws to complete this frame. I want you guys to comment down below how many screws you think we used to build this. And whoever is the closest, I wanna send you a $20 Amazon gift card. So make sure you also leave either your IG or your email in the comments down below, along with your guess of how many screws we use. And I would love to send you that gift card. All right guys, so we just put in the last screws of the evening. This is what the base of our shed is looking like currently. I think it looks really, really good. So next step is to put the plywood on top so we have a nice smooth level foundation or just a smooth surface to like walk on now. And then after that, we're gonna begin building the trusses and then we'll begin putting the walls up. So really exciting stuff. Stuff. It's coming along for sure. So now that the frame is all built, you guys, and it looks so good. I mean, it looks so, like it's coming together. It looks like a real construction site now. I'm so happy and so proud of this, even though it's just a frame. But now, you guys, we are gonna be adding our plywood, and we got an OSB subfloor from Lowe's. These little panels here, they have like a little tongue and groove action going on. They were about $40 a piece, and we needed three of them for our 14 by eight shed along with the porch, but the porch is gonna have um, some deck board. So this is only gonna be for the inside of the shed. And I've been thinking now like, okay, what am I gonna do to make this pretty? Am I going to paint over it and maybe do like a stencil tile? Am I going to actually add peel and stick tile on top of here? Or am I gonna do like some wood laminate flooring up in here? I don't know, but I want this to be cute. It is going to be a shed, but it's going to be a cute shed. So 
you guys have seen all my inspo pictures so let me know what ideas you guys have for the flooring and we definitely will get that done once we have the walls up i can't wait So you guys, it is the next day. We had experienced some light rain the night before. So we're always using the tarp just to cover up our project because this OSB subfloor, it's not water treated or anything, I believe. So it doesn't really need to get wet. So Marcus is going ahead and he is about to screw in the subfloor onto the frame because we can't just leave it on here like this. It needs to be <laughs> secured down some way. Um, and so like I mentioned before, this is a tongue and groove subfloor. So basically the pieces kind of fit into each other like a puzzle. The instructions say that you're supposed to put about five screws along each joist and then five along all the edges as well. So it's a whole bunch of screws that we're using, but you guys for this subfloor part that we're doing right now, don't include the number of these screws into your answer for the giveaway. For the giveaway, I only want to know how many screws you think we use to build the frame, not this subfloor. So please don't count these in your guesses or you will be way over because we use a crazy amount of screws just for this process. So guys, that brings us just about to the end of today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it because y'all are literally coming along with us on this journey of creating our DIY shed from scratch. I cannot wait until we begin putting up the walls. I feel like that then it'll get really, really real for me. But I love you guys so much and I will catch you all in my next one. Leave your comments down below, like and subscribe. Bye guys.